Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to F2 Worlds, the channel where we talk all things Final Fantasy. Last week, I posted a poll on the YouTube channel asking you guys which topic you wanted me to cover first. In a close voting, this video edged out the other topic of what Spira would have been like if Unaleska had departed to the Far Plane. That will still be covered, but at a later date. Before I begin, I would just like to let you all know that this video will be split into two parts, as there are many events that occur in this timeline of events, so we will cover the events that occur in the 10 years leading up to Final Fantasy X in today's video, while the second video will cover what would happen in the alternated version of events that would happen at the start of Final Fantasy X. A central plotline in the story of Final Fantasy X is Jet's involvement in the events of Spira. It all started while he was training out at sea 10 years ago before he came too close to Sin and was transported to Spira, where he was imprisoned because of his confusion and wondering where Xanarkand was. While he was imprisoned, he was recruited by Braska as the second guardian before embarking on his journey to defeat Sin, which was successful, but it resulted in the death of Braska and Jet becoming the core of the current Sin, and laid the foundation of the story that took place in Final Fantasy X. But what if that never happened? What if Jet never came into contact with Sin and kept training out at sea in peace? We will be taking a look at the events of the game if Jet was never transported to Spira 10 years ago, and it changes what the events of Spira would look like for Braska, and later for Yuna and her guardians. To put it simply, it'll change a lot. But to what extent? That is what we will explore in today's video, so let us begin with the alternate timeline series of what if Jet was never sent to Spira 10 years ago. Now, normally, we would take a look at the parallels of the events in Dream Xanarkand and Spira, but the events in Dream Xanarkand would be relatively peaceful. Jet would still be playing Blitzball and would be making Titus cry with his consistent picking of him, as well as Titus' mom still alive and taking care of both Jet and Titus. It is likely nothing significant will happen in Dream Xanarkand for the next 10 years. For Titus, they'll have to go through 10 more years of Jet making him cry and picking on him. Spira, however, does not have the same peaceful nature of events that occur without Jet and the timeline changes quite a bit on this end. Braska and Oren are still in search of another Guardian on their journey to defeat Sin. The reason why Braska recruited Jet is because of the irony of his party being composed of a drunk, a disgraced monk, and a summoner who married an Albed, embarking on their journey out to defeat Sin. But without Jet, Braska and Oren still search. Their journey eventually takes them to Mount Gagazet, where they observe the Ronso, especially the youth. As they look on, they come across a young Kimari Ronso, who is smaller in build compared to the other Ronso in his size. Considering how long the journey would have taken after recruiting Jet, it is unlikely that it would take them the same amount of time to find Kimari. So by the time he is recruited by Braska, he has not had his fight with Biron Ronso from the original timeline. Now the irony behind his party now becomes a summoner who was wed in Albed, a disgraced monk, and a Ronso whose size does not fit the standard of even that of female Ronso. At this time, the Ronso has not yet had a representative in Yevon, as the sub-racist appeasement policy was made by Maester Micah after Brask had defeated Sin, so they were not fully integrated into the religion at this time and were still relatively seen as outsiders. By this time, Kimari would be around 15 years old, meaning he would be training to become strong like his Ronso kin. In this timeline, he would be trained by Oren and Braska in the art of war, making him proficient in both melee combat and magic capabilities, similar to his jack-of-all-trades route in the Sphere Grid. However, Kimari would not leave unhindered. Jealous that he was recruited by Braska to embark on the journey to defeat Sin, an enraged Peron challenges Kimari to battle to prove to Braska that he should be the guardian over Kimari, a challenge that Kimari accepts. This would be the point where Kimari loses his battle against Biran, but his persistent further angers an already enraged Biran and leads him to losing his horn, disgracing the young Ronso. Braska would stop the battle here, forcing Biran to step back. Despite the outcome, Braska would still choose Kimari to be his guardian because of his determination to win, despite his opponent being much stronger than he was, was enough to convince Braska that Kimari would make a suitable guardian, and the three departed. The journey would play out somewhat similarly to how it would have been if Jet was in the party instead of Kimari, with the slight exception that the spheres recorded would more likely be on the point of view of Braska to send to Yuna for when she grows up and becomes a summoner herself one day. We can see that Kimari's devotion to Braska would be similar to his loyalty to Yuna we see in the events of the original timeline. While not saying as much, eventually warming up to both Braska and Oren at some point during the journey. It is evident that Kimari is far more disciplined than Jet seemingly was, so it is likely that Kimari and Oren had a mentor and student relationship during their pilgrimage. Oren would train Kimari in the art of sword fighting, 
being trained by a monk who was working his way up the clergy, it is likely that this Kimari would be stronger than his current timeline counterpart. Not to mention, he was trained by Orin at the young age of 15. The next major event would happen in the Xanarkand Ruins, when Yuna Leska forces Braska to choose a guardian for his final Aeon. This is where a shift in the dynamic occurs. Both Orin and Kimari are similar in terms of their loyalty to Braska due to how they were recruited, with Orin being disgraced by the clergy and Kimari being shamed by Biran in combat. However, in this timeline, despite Orin still showing a desire to turn back and find a different means to defeat Sin permanently, he offers to become the final Aeon in the end. This would be for two reasons. The first and main reason would be that Orin sees that Kimari would still be very young and will have to prove himself to his rivals in Mount Gagazet of his newly acquired strength with the secondary reason of giving Kimari the responsibility of bringing the young Yuna to Besaid, where she would grow up. Knowing he can entrust Braska's wish to Kimari, and training him to fight and defeat the stronger Biran, who has undoubtedly continued his training during their pilgrimage, Orin becomes the final Aeon for Braska. The events going into Final Fantasy X remain the same, with the legendary guardian Kimari taking Yuna from Bevel to Besaid, where he would watch over her as she grew up similar to the original timeline. However, since Orin is now a part of Sin, the rest of this alternate timeline episode will continue with Orin being the core of the current incarnation of Sin, and he never visits Dream Xanarkand. This is where the timeline can go in different directions, and depending on the reception of this video, aka how many likes this video gets, so be sure to like it if you're enjoying the story so far, but in this timeline, Titus and Jet will be appearing to Spira due to the guidance of one entity, the Faith of Bahamut. Now, since the core of Sin is Orin, and Orin and Jet never had the relationship that they had in the original timeline, Orin would not have attacked Xanarkand the same way Jet did in the original timeline, with the purpose of bringing both Titus and Orin to Xanarkand, meaning Jet and Titus will be arriving to Spira in a different but somewhat similar method. And that will end part 1 of What If Jet Was Never Transported to Spira. I had a thought of completely omitting both Jet and Titus from this video, but I know most of you would have brought out your pitchforks and demanded that I included Jet and Titus into the storyline anyway. So if you want me to make a version where Jet and Titus are not included, let me know in the comment section below and I can make a separate branch where Jet and Titus are never included and how the storyline would go from there. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts on the time of events I included and if you would change anything. Other than that, this is Enzo signing out and that, as they say, is that.